perfect shape of the keys so I can just feel my way around to type without even looking down. The feedback as my thumbs strike the pad while making no typos. My name is Joanna and I have a problem. I love phones with physical keyboards. Some people say I'm living in the past, that the time for physical keyboards is over, that BlackBerry is barely hanging on by a thread, and all these other companies that once made phones with physical keyboards are just making touchscreen phones. But there's hope. No, the answer isn't buying a new BlackBerry. Instead, there are two new iPhone keyboard cases for people like me who prefer real keys. There's this one for $60 and this one for $100. And these could be the solution to all my problems, except they have their own problems. First, I checked out the Typo keyboard. The $100 case is thin and resembles a BlackBerry keyboard. In fact, it looks so much like one that BlackBerry is taking Typo's maker to court. Seriously, it looks exactly like a BlackBerry. The company still says it plans to ship this month, though. Typing on the keys feels a lot like typing on a BlackBerry. Pair the case via Bluetooth with the iPhone, and you're off to the races. I've been able to type about 57 words per minute. That's double what I can type per minute on the iPhone software keyboard. But it isn't perfect. The case covers up the iPhone's home button, replacing it with a home key in the lower right-hand corner. It's a big problem if you use the iPhone 5S fingerprint sensor. The case is also very plasticky, and keys can make this annoying sound when you type. Oh, sorry, it's bothering you? I had other issues with the typo. You can't use the iPhone's autocorrect feature. The case makes the phone bottom heavy, and you have to charge the case via micro USB. It isn't powered by the phone itself. So Bluetooth has some downsides, and that's why instead the Spike keyboard case does something a little bit different. They take the physical keyboard and put it right on top of Apple's software keyboard. As you press these keys, it hits the software keys. When you don't need the keyboard, you can flip it out of the way. The problem with that is that I'm constantly flipping it out of the way. Want to unlock the phone? Flip. Want to watch a video? Flip. Read an article? Flip again. And I'd say that would be worth it, but the keyboard isn't very good. The keys are too close together, and you have to press harder than you should. The spike actually makes me type worse than I do on my iPhone's on-screen keyboard. Both the typo and the spike are only out for the iPhone, so what's an Android typer supposed to do? There are some very clunky Bluetooth keyboards, but there are easier ways to ease into touchscreen typing with Android. First, there is some assistance with wider screen phones, like the 5-inch Galaxy S4. There's just more screen real estate. With those, I can type closer to 35 words per minute. Then there are options like Swipe, where you draw a line from letter to letter to build a word, and then rely on its auto prediction to speed things up. I average closer to 32 words per minute with Swipe, though I have to look down at the screen a lot. I was fastest on a touchscreen with SwiftKey at 40 words per minute. It has a great layout and prediction. People say I'll come around to typing on touchscreen keyboards. It looks like I'll have to. Physical keyboards seem to get in the way of the touchscreen experience. Still, for now, the typo keyboard isn't a bad crutch for someone like me who just has this obsession with real keys. Maybe one day I'll get that perfect case. Maybe. One day. <laughs>